G'day, I'd like to compare an active mini whip antenna based on the Papa Alpha Zero Romeo Delta Tango design and a sloping wire antenna that I've got strung up in the backyard. Now I've had this um, active antenna for probably about 12 months and I purchased it originally from the Russian Federation via Romeo Alpha Zero Sierra Mike Sierra because it was actually cheaper, significantly for me anyway, to buy ready built than to source the components online. Now, unfortunately, somewhere between Russia and Australia, the remote head unit got damaged with the transistor breaking off the circuit board, pretty much due to the fact that the circuit board's free floating within the casing. Now, I made a construction change and fabricated a PVC collar to support the circuit board in the casing or the head unit, and that's pretty much eliminated any movement at all whatsoever. Prior to that, it had been just some foam to create an interference fit to stop the circuit board from moving. Now the unit comes in two components, the power feed unit and the remote head unit, which obviously gets mounted outside. The power feed unit has got three connectors on it, one for a 12 volt input, which is an RCA connector. The adjoining VNC connector is actually the external antenna connection and the receiver gets connected at the rear of the, of the case on the remaining VNC connector. Now for this particular experiment, we're going to use a SDR radio that I've got configured already, leave all the settings the same, and just simply swap the antennas over. Now, reception is pretty mediocre today, tonight, so we'll be looking at Radio New Zealand and ABC Northern Territory as our primary stations for comparison. Let's get to it. And towards the end of that road, while we ran off the road, hit a tree and several of them were killed. Hmm. And I thought, Almost personally. And the local mayor said, yeah, we're getting a lot of accidents there, and I'll bet it's heavily policed in terms of the speed limit. And the poor young folk just went to sleep at the end of a long drive. It didn't need to be as long. Could have kept them more alert. Could have got them there sooner. And or been more, uh, more prepared to have a break. But, you know, we soldier on. And I mean, we get on the hay plains and areas of Western Australia and Northern Queensland and all sorts of places and, you know, up in Burke and Britannia and goodness, hundreds of kilometres of straight stuff with almost with no eyes, you know. Mm. And again, on hay plains and things, there were mirages, you know, mm. it looked as though there was water up ahead and mm. it wasn't, you know, and it was summer and you know, all that. I just think we should be driving more conditions. A friend was, was telling me not long ago of um, somebody they heard talking earlier today on radio. And they call this most horrific thing of somebody in the left lane, three lanes from where they suddenly realised they needed to be. And they were going to get there. And this truck driver performed miracles mm -hmm. in not actually completely wiping it out. There was a little bit of a touch. But you have had no concept of what trucks can do. And again, in our licensing, do they tell us how to use the throttle properly to merge properly, to go to a roundabout, you know, out of a roundabout properly? How to uh, avoid it, or what to do when you see an animal? What trucks can do and not do? Pretty in attack system, the chamber will oppose it and challenge government's ability to implement it. Mr. Lyons says tampering with laws that govern tax without due consideration for equity could endanger the entire Cook Islands economy. He said it could also undermine confidence in the integrity of government and have a negative impact on how the Cook Islands is perceived by prospective investors and regional and international donors. Ryan also noted that the Prime Minister's announcement is at odds with recent statements by the Finance Minister and the work being undertaken by his ministry to encourage and support universal tax compliance. Provincial elections will be held in four of Vanuatu's six provinces on the 23rd of March. The Electoral Commission says the four-year terms of the Malampa, Tenama, Shefa and Safir Council will come to an end. It says applications for candidates hoping to contest the elections opens on the 13th of February ahead of the campaign start on the 6th of March. The Commission's chairman, Martin Tete, is appealing for people to register to vote and for political parties in Maritime safety authorities in the Solomon Islands are investigating three incidents of vessels running aground over the Christmas three-year period. 
the MD now coming on a ground on a week before the coming by the MD victory and MD success in Dhaka on a ground in Malaysia province. So that was the night of safety operation safe boat and steady from the newspaper from where there have been no fatalities reported. Mr. Sarrow said some of the vessels did not immediately report having run aground to the agency, which is in direct violation of safety regulations. He said an inspection of the end in our trouble found there was no major damage to the vessel, but managed to get off the reef with it and sail back to her yard after offloading all of its cargo and its 220 passengers. He said a similar inspection will be carried out on the two other vessels once they return to the capital. Mr. Sarrow said he's cautioning all captains to report immediately to Sinsa if they are facing problems at sea for the safety of passengers. Relatives of the 13 deceased and 16 injured passengers in Monday's fatal motor vehicle crash.